Hi everyone, as an industrial design student, I'm constantly aware of new workflows that might be beneficial to me now or in the future. Something that I'm interested in investing some time into lately is an app for the iPad called Shaper 3D. What you're watching in the background is a recording from my iPad using Shaper to block in a model of a cooking device I had to design for a university assignment. The iPad has quickly become one of my most valuable tools as an industrial design student, as it is so suitable for a designer's workflow. It does everything for me, such as note-taking, drawing, or watching courses through Skillshare and LinkedIn Learning. It can do everything for me, but I have stopped short of using it for 3D modeling. That is until now. So Shaper 3D certainly isn't a new app, and I have been aware of it for some time, but I just didn't see the need for modeling on the iPad when I'd be using my PC and SolidWorks for that task. And then I saw a post on the Industrial Design subreddit about a workflow of using Shaper 3D for blocking in a model which you could then export over to Procreate and use as a reference to do a design sketch. I felt the comments were pretty harsh on the guy as they were pretty much saying why wouldn't you just use the time to do the sketch from the start? Or if you had done the model why not export it at that stage to Keyshot and render something better than any sketch you could do? These are valid points but I don't think they were fair. Personally, I could see the potential of using Shaper and blocking in your model to get the angle right for a sketch. And for someone that often struggles to get the right angle for a perspective drawing or just not completely satisfied with the quality of their concept sketching, I think this workflow could possibly work for me too. I could simply go into SolidWorks and block in a model and I could potentially do that pretty quickly, but would Shaper be faster and more convenient? So since I had an assignment in progress, I decided to give Shaper a try and put it to the test. Shaper 3D is a 3D CAD app available on the iPad, and it's also available on Mac and in early access on Windows. The developers refer to its workflow style as direct modeling, which makes sense as you use the iPad stylus to manipulate the model through selections, pushing, and pulling. If you're at all familiar with SolidWorks or Inventor CAD software, then Shaper will feel very similar as the workflow is often starting with a plane to make a sketch, constraining the sketch, and then extruding to build or cut away material. It doesn't have a history or feature tree like SolidWorks or Inventor does, but I'll get into the drawbacks later. It can also import and export many different CAD types, but only with the paid version. So the original subreddit post was saying how they would use Shaper to block in a model and get the general shape and perspective right for a product they were working on. This way they could export a screenshot and bring it into Procreate and start design sketching based on that. The app is quite intuitive. You use your fingers to navigate the camera and the stylus is used to manipulate the model. Sketching profiles with the stylus is very natural and there are all the usual constraint tools like perpendicular, linear, concentric, etc. Tapping on a closed sketch profile opens options to push or pull to extrude or cut material and you can also add draft. Tapping on dimensions allow you to specify specific measurements so you can be very accurate with your modeling. Tapping on edges, you can add fillets or chamfers. So it's all very obvious in how it works. Plus there are many familiar tools like mirroring, projecting, shells, sweeps, etc. It's all very natural and most importantly, I find it very fun to use. So after using Shaper myself, I could see how quickly you could model something and it's quite impressive. It took me just over an hour to create this cooking device concept, although this is only after a couple of hours learning how to use the app and also going a little bit further than just blocking in a shape since I wanted to use it for some low effort renders. When starting the app, you're greeted with some introductory gesture videos and an introductory tutorial on modeling a bracket. I really liked how the video tutorial was overlaid as a picture in picture type display. So you can follow the video and pause, rewind, all that as you work through it, and this tutorial explains a lot of the basics to get you started. After that, there is a section in the app that has more tutorials, but unfortunately they take you externally to Shaper's YouTube channel, and you don't get that picture-in-picture -picture layout anymore. The good thing is there is quite a lot to go through, and even with some being from earlier versions of the app, the workflow is still similar, and the tools are in similar locations. Outside of the Shaper YouTube channel, I haven't really found too much other learning resources, and I think this is related to one of their biggest issues, which I'll get into. With that in mind, let's go into the next section, the pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. It's easy and intuitive to use. 
It has a similar modeling workflow to SolidWorks or Inventor. The tutorials are really good and detailed. There is a free full featured educational license available. And it's amazing how powerful this program is yet portable in an iPad. Some of the cons are the pricing, the market positioning of where these developers are trying to fit this app. There is only one tutorial that's natively in the app and then everything else is external. There's no feature history tree like SolidWorks or Inventor, and there's no file syncing to share between devices, although I believe this is being worked on currently. So you can probably guess by now that I'm pretty impressed with how fast and easy it is to model out some conceptual ideas, which you can then either get some basic visualization on, export to a wide range of CAD software, or just take screenshots and draw over in Procreate. I love that using the iPad stylus feels so natural and even without using tutorials, you can kind of figure things out yourself as it's so well laid out. The tutorials are very informative and get you off to a great start. I think even as a beginner to 3D modeling, you'd probably pick it up quite easily. For someone that visits clients offsite or moves around a lot for work, having this level of 3D modeling is impressive to have on an iPad that fits in your bag, or if you had an iPad mini, potentially even fit in your pocket. But some of the cons really have me doubting if I'd use the app professionally once I can no longer use an educational license. Unlike SolidWorks or Inventor, Shaper doesn't have a feature history tree, so you can't go back and modify features to the extent you would with other software. You can adjust some things like change the height of an extrusion or the radius on a fillet, but don't expect to be able to adjust a feature that will propagate through the system and everything updates. Basically, if the change is too big, it might be easier just to go start the model again. Or what I did was plan ahead and do everything in individual bodies. So then you can delete a body and just start that particular body again. The biggest problem though is the pricing and where Shaper thinks it fits in the market. So the pricing is 29 USD a month, or if you pay yearly, you get a discounted rate at 239, which is $20 a month. That is some pretty steep pricing and competing against something like Fusion 360, which you can use for free as a hobbyist or professionally for 4 95 a year. Obviously, Shaper is cheaper than Fusion per year, but overall, you're gonna get so much more function out of Fusion. Whereas Shaper, you're kind of paying for the gimmick of it's the only good 3D modeling with a stylus on an iPad. And there lies the major problem holding Shaper back. It's trying to be a professional tool on a platform, which is the iPad, that is, in my opinion, dominated by hobbyists, but commanding the hobbyists pay a premium to use it. Those people are just gonna to go to Fusion 360 for free to do all their home 3D printing requirements. No doubt there are going to be some professional users where Shaper ticks all the requirements and they're happy to pay the 239 a year, but Shaper really need to look at what their users are saying. And with that said, I did take a look at what their users were saying on their forums, which is basically, Shaper is too expensive, you need a hobbyist plan. Many were saying that they'd be happy to pay 10 or $15 a month, but beyond that, it was just asking too much. And the direct response from the CEO was quite shocking as it showed a complete disconnection from reality. What we offer for the price of a few coffees a month is quite incredible and unique. Multiple platforms, parasolid based solid modeling, various export import formats, argumented reality, new features every two weeks, and so on. Considering that we are the fastest growing CAD company in the last 30 years, I believe that our users agree. Check out Fusion 360 and Tinkercad, for example, both are completely free. Seeing this from the CEO is crazy. The replies sum it up. For a few coffees a month, can't believe you just said that. Your response is gross. What everyone has said on this forum is 100% true. You literally made a hobbyist software that hobbyists cannot afford. So you can see Shaper is trying to slam itself into the professional market at an almost professional price while saying to anyone half interested in it, just to sacrifice a few coffees a month. And to me, just as the other guy said, that's pretty gross. But I do not doubt there are some people out there that find this program and it works for them. I'm not doubting that. I do really want to like Shaper. It's fun to use, it's fast to use, and for quick ideation modeling, it's a great tool to have. But as someone that highly values their time, I just don't know if it's worth investing the time to learn it. No, scratch that, because for me, it's not about learning the app. With my experience in SOLIDWORKS, I've been able to pick it up in just a few hours and any extra time I put in is just gonna make me more efficient. 
My problem is I don't think I could justify the price for my use case. Looking into the future after my industrial design degree, I would likely be working for a design company and I seriously doubt they are going to be asking me to start modeling a project in Shaper. They probably haven't even heard of it. I more see myself using Shaper for university coursework, ideation through modeling, and helping with design sketching references. I would like to use it beyond the educational license for hobby 3D printing, but the free version only exports low quality SDL, which are apparently awful for 3D printing. I really hope that in the future, this company can find some way of bringing in more of that user base of hobbyists and working out some pricing structure that is suitable for them. So that's my thoughts on Shaper 3D. I do recommend to check it out, especially if you can get access to an educational license. It might help you through your degree like I can see it helping me. It is a really fun app to model with and maybe you can find a professional use for it and can justify the cost. For me, probably not, and that's a shame. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you're new, I've got a whole series of SOLIDWORKS beginner videos which you might be interested in as well. That's it for today. Talk to you next time.